Hello and welcome to another update video about the S&P 500. Just want to take another look at the price action of the October lows. Um, right, we have arrived now at a key decision point, I think. Um, already in the last few videos we talked about, right, we can expect one more high. That one more high happened. But I think now we have a decision point. We also have a decent sized pullback now on the S&P. And I want to take a look at the chart with you to, to, to establish, you know, how can it carry on now and what are the relevant levels to watch. I highlighted to you, I am bullish on the S&P short term, um, but there is significant risk and we could have a more substantial B wave top here, which will result in a C, oops, in a C wave to the downside. That drop can be significant and take months, if not years. Yeah. So uh, we have... Uh, arrived at a point where I can count the move down of the December high 2021. I can count that move down as an A wave into the October 22 lows. Then the move up as a B wave, it overshot or it did overshoot slightly our pivot point. So the idea was here, um, pivot point is here, yeah, decision point, 78.6 FIB level. And we said if it gets above that level, it could have bullish implications. However, what is even more important than the FIB levels and the price development um, is the market structure, I think. yeah. So even though we broke above the 78.6 retracement, which is potentially bullish yeah, um, because it is stronger than what an, a B wave would normally do, which could then result in the C wave sell off, um, it is not significant enough to say, okay, this can't be a B wave. Um, so structure is important because as long as I only have a three wave move up of the October lows, and I do only have three waves up, A wave, B wave, C wave. And this C wave is basically complete now. Yes, it can still push higher, but um, it is uh, we have enough waves. And it looks to me that we have reached here a significant high. So this is now where a decision is going to be made. Now, I'm not telling you we are coming down. As I said, short term, I'm bullish because the trend is up. But when short term support is breaking, that is when the avalanche can start because context is everything. Also in analyzing charts and also in Elliott, come on, by using Elliott Wave, we understand the key pivot points. We understand that this is a key, an absolute key level that makes it even more important to watch those relevant support areas when they break, it can crash down basically. Very, very important. Now this will take many weeks to play out, yeah, to understand if we are um, still bullish or actually bearish. What I just wanna express here is that obviously I'm going to go with the trend, which is up, but the context and the Elliott Wave analysis allows me to understand that there is significant risk to the downside. Risk management is so important. But yeah, the point is, Yes, we have an ABC structure finished, which means we have three waves up of the October low. Now that could still develop something more bullish because there is, of course, a bullish scenario as well. And what the bullish scenario does, it gives us a support area that we can now watch. So this would be here this way four, because either I have three waves up ABC or I have a wave one, I have a wave two, I have a wave three, and we could now come down in a wave four. Because until you have, um, so if you if you have an ABC structure, you basically, it's often very similar to a one, two, three. So it's just now what happens now when we get into a support region, which we're going to determine together now, that the major decision is going to be taken. So what do we do? How do we measure support for the waveform? Well, we take the length of the third wave, which started here on the 10th of March, at around $3,810. We go all the way to the high here. And then we take the 50% um, retrace, one second, uh, because it's a wave four, it would be a shallow retracement. So yellow is the relevant support area for the wave four. I should really move the red zone to the left, otherwise they're overlapping too much. So let's do that. That was resistance. That's still an important pivot point. However, uh, let me take that out. What is important now is this orange fourth wave support. And that starts at $4,385. And 
and goes down to 4177. That means only if price breaks below 4177, I have a strong confirmation that we are actually heading down here in the C wave and that could take us to 3000, 2500. Um, however, there is of course short term, oops, didn't want to, no, whatever. Uh, there is of course short term support before we get that far, okay? Because it can be, it could be that in this lower degree structure, we are still pushing higher. And um, let's put short term support onto the chart as well. That is really then the micro, the relevant micro support. So that starts here at 4452 and goes down to 4381. That's really just short term support. I mean, if we don't even get into the yellow region, then I would say we have a direct um, continuation and we actually haven't seen the fourth wave yet. The fourth wave should have a decent length as well, time wise. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Now, this is now the time where we are going to see a key decision. Um, the price has turned. Either we continue directly, then we need to hold the orange box. If we get into the yellow box, that's um, that's the decision area, the main pivot point, major pivot point. And at the moment, it seems like the 50% FIB level here at 4177, that's the decision point between, okay, we can make a new all-time high maybe even, yeah, and okay, we crash down whatever, uh, a huge percentage of the uh, on the S&P chart. Yeah, that's my update about the S&P 500. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.